When CPAP first came out, Colin Sullivan tells a story about his first patient. They had this idea, it was purely a research idea, it was kind of a harebrained idea. They had this truck driver who had two car accidents, had very severe sleep apnea, and categorically refused tracheostomy, which is this operation to put a hole in the throat. So they, they figured they'd try this out just to get some interesting measurements. And they put him on the lab, and two hours into the study, Colin started writing his paper. He said he'd never done that before. Two hours into the first patient, he knew he had it. He'd nailed it. Okay? And the next morning, the patient refused to go home unless they figured out a way to... Because what it was, was it was a vacuum cleaner turned backwards, and the mask consisted of a dribbled-on glue attaching two nose prongs into the guy's nose in a kind of a semi-permanent way that had to be dissolved in the morning. The guy wouldn't go home without it. And he was treated with that, you know, for a while before. Well, the point I'm trying to make is he got involved, I got involved very shortly after that with my first patient who I happen to have seen yesterday, now 30 years later, um, still on CPAP. And we all had these incredibly gadgety, hopeless, scotch tape and bailing wire things. And we tried to get a company to make it. We said, you know, we can't keep doing this. Nobody, and everybody we told about it said, that's really interesting science, but nobody's going to wear that thing. And there's no money in it. We'll never sell it. Okay? That's what the companies all said. We went to companies. We begged. We pleaded. We said, and they said, no way. It, it, there's no money in it. You know, it's too easy, too easy to copy. Nobody will buy it. There's no patients out there. Well, then the studies started coming out from Wisconsin and from the Sleep Heart Health and some other places, not only about the fact that there's a lot of apnea. We're now estimating that 20% of the population may have mild forms of apnea. And certainly 5 or 6% have pretty severe apnea. That's a lot of people. That's more than diabetes, which we all know about. That's you know, approaching numbers many times more than lung cancer or, or breast cancer. I mean, we're talking huge numbers of people who are affected. Well, the companies aren't stupid, so they put money into making CPAP because of that. And the other companies that make alternate treatments, the dental devices, the, the surgical approaches, the pacing devices, they all said, you know, there's a patient population. We can make money or at least not lose money by doing this. And I don't mean to suggest it's all money, but the point is where there's a need, people invest. Mm -hmm.